Okay, let's see if we're online. Give me a moment. I want to make sure there's audio going out. Is there? And there is audio going out. Good. So, welcome to another low effort stream because I don't have time to edit video. Uh, this is the Fujitsu Siemens, or rather just Fujitsu uh, laptop. We fixed some liquid damage on and uh, shabbily reassembled uh, in another stream. So, this thing is in rather horrid condition. It's missing a bunch of pieces and uh, uh, I want to turn it into something uh, for my uh, TV. And uh, in the past I've been using various headless laptops for that, but they've all had various issues. Uh, one which worked very well in general had a very light fan and it was too power hungry to run without a fan. Another one uh, worked excellent without a fan, but uh, it instead had uh, an issue where it would not power on uh, by just hammering at the keyboard. And since my HTPC laptop is mounted up by the TV, uh, it, uh, it, I can't turn it on by pressing the power button. That is not very uh, efficient. And my stream is showing yellow. That's not good. Anyway, uh, but uh, this laptop uh, has all the features we need. It uh, can run fine without a fan. I have removed the fan. Uh, it can be turned on by mashing the keyboard and uh, it uh, even sees my wireless networks, which neither of the previous uh, HTPC laptops have. So I really want to use this thing for that application and it uh, helps that it's missing a bunch of parts. It's useless as a laptop. Uh, so uh, to get a laptop to be useful uh, headless is a bit of work because the wireless antennas are mounted in the screen. So I have scourged up just a couple of random antennas I had lying in a bin. I hope these are from a laptop. I think they're from a laptop, so they should work fine. And the plan is to remove the screen and uh, mount the antennas uh, back here in the battery compartment because uh, that's where. Uh, uh, they have the biggest chance of actually seeing my network. Since this thing is mounted behind a metal TV, uh, this is the only bit that sticks out a little bit to the side. So that's where we're going to have a best reception, hopefully. Uh, but uh, for starters, we need to get rid of a screen assembly. So that uh, entails uh, disassembling this thing slightly, which is not going to be a big bother since uh, if you saw the previous screen, uh, stream, this thing has almost no screws because uh, I think I, I either lost all the screws or uh, someone else took this thing apart before they threw it away and lost the screws in the process. Uh, people are showing up in the chat, that's good. Hello everyone. Reft is asking what's that brand, the laptop brand. Uh, this is a Fujitsu laptop, a uh, Lifebook A514. It's a cheap consumer laptop. Uh, it's got a fourth gen uh, Haswell processor, uh, i3, something or the other. So it's a, a, a reasonably modern thing, very power efficient. Uh, it's uh, a low voltage i3. The model number of CPU in this thing is uh, i3-4005U. I think the U designates uh, ultra low voltage. It's a 15 watt TDP processor, uh, so it runs fine uh, with no additional fan cooling as long as you mount the laptop vertically. It can even uh, continuously run Prime 95 passively, uh, which is quite impressive. Uh, right, so that's another screw we need to be rid of before we can rip this thing apart. Refter says he's watching this live on a Clevo Odia Core 2 Duo from 2008. You poor sod. Clevo. Didn't they like OEM Acer for a while? I think O. No, Clevo, they were guys who OEM'd all the like uh, no name cheaper laptops from around that era, 2005 to 2010, maybe. 
So yeah, that's that's a woo. That's a cheap laptop. Sam Nurse is saying hello. Hello, Sam. So we need to undo the power button there. We need to undo the touchpad here. We don't have a keyboard, obviously. That's uh, somewhere else. We don't need a keyboard. And uh, is this thing is this going to pop apart? Snap, crackle. Are we missing a screw? Oh no, it's held together. Uh, in the previous stream, I actually hot glued the DC jack in place because it's all broken. So we're going to have to rip some of that hot glue. Hopefully, it's going to let it go in the right place. Let's just get a knife in there and kind of cut it. There we go. Oh yeah, we have these speakers there, which are basically impossible to disconnect. But I don't think we need to disconnect this because we can, we can just move this apart, <laughs> aside. So here are all the wiring. All the wiring. Here is all the wiring. Uh, so we have the Wi-Fi antennas going one on each side and the screen cable going there. So we want to actually unraid all the wiring before we undo the screen because else we're just going to rip everything and we don't want to ruin this. Uh, it could be useful to have a thing as a whole unit. In the future I don't like ruining things needlessly so we're just going to poke all the wiring out so we do, just so we don't destroy it. And yeah, the, the, the Wi-Fi wiring is going to be a bit of a bother. The screen wire is very short, so that's going to be a breeze. Just have to poke it underneath the Ethernet wire there. There we go. And that's the screen wire unrated, but the Wi-Fi antennas are a bit more of a bother. Because they're quite intricately rounded. I know, because I did it myself. This one came out well, that's the black one, but the white one is kind of doing all over. Let's just hope the connector doesn't snag on anything and the connector has snagged on something. Oh, there we go. That's the screen wiring undone. And uh, now it's just a question of undoing five screws to dismount the screen. I still have a cold. Speaking hurts. Uh, I've hot glued this one in place a bit, but we'll just use brute force to get access to that. Making an effort not to cut the DC input jack in the process. There we go. ZX8401 says no screed, no no keyboard. Are you killing it? No, we're making it great. We don't need a screen, we don't need a keyboard because we've got those somewhere else. This thing has uh, it's gonna be connected to a keyboard by my bed and a screen mounted above my bed, making it an excellent porn machine. No, I'm just joking, I don't use it for that. I have a different PC for that. Because when you're me, you have so many random crappy laptops, you can just have a dedicated porn machine. There we go. That is one liberated screen. So now we're getting into the fun part, which is, oh hey, I've found, this is the PC it's replacing, a third gen i5. Also had the screen removed, Wi-Fi antennas in the back there. Right. So maybe we actually want to disconnect the speakers there. 
Yeah, I think we want to be rid of a speaker just to make things a bit easier because this top cover is going to be flopping around everywhere. And we need to be a bit careful with this because if you watch the previous stream, you'll know that this mainboard is connected with exactly one uh, screw. It's not mounted with anything else. And I can now see that we have a bunch of corrosion on this USB connector, which is right by the water damage. So I'm actually going to clean that up right now so that uh, eh, it doesn't cause issues in the future because that stuff could be slightly just causing damage. Oxidation likes to grow over time, even if the liquid is removed. And uh, I really need this connected to work fine because the analog audio outputs are there on that daughter board and I need the analog audio connectors on this because it also connects to a sound bar which is completely analog. So there we go. Uh, now we need to figure out a way to get these antennas mounted to the case. And I'm not entirely sure how to go about that. I hope we're going to get good reception because these tend to kind of depend on being connected to a big ground plane as well. And we don't have that since we're mounting them in plastic, so it's a bit hit and miss if it actually works doing Wi-Fi this way. Uh, so uh, we have a good point of entry for the antenna wires here by the battery connector because that's, that's a lot of uh, slack in that mounting. We don't need to drill a hole for that. So that's good. Uh, even the connector is just flapping around. Stay in place. So I kind of want to just drill a couple of holes and uh, let's get you guys a bit of a better view. No crotch, can they? There we go. I kind of want to drill a couple of holes like here and uh, mount these over. So this part is the antenna part. We probably want that sticking out. So these could go kind of like that, one on each side. Now I know from experience that hot glue doesn't work well on these laptop plastics, so we are going to have to make some kind of actual mechanical mount. Uh, zip ties aren't going to work because uh, we, we still need to mount the top case and it would look absolutely horrifying if uh, uh, there was a zip tie going around there. So, or would it? Now let's just see if we can use a hand drill to drill a tiny uh, M2.5 hole there and just monger in a small screw. So I have my tiny hand drill. Is this a reasonably sized drill? Yeah, it's a bit too small. But it'll do. Let's just try it. So that part should be sticking out. Like so. That's a hole. And another hole in the other end. There we go. And we'll do the same for the other end, turning the other end. Uh, again, I do apologize for just making so many streams as of late. We're in the middle of uh, basically two moves. I'm cleaning out the uh, top floor of this house right now and uh, 
basically my uh, editing, <laughs> my whole main PC rig is in shambles. It's got pieces missing here and there. And it's just a bother to edit video on. But uh, that's an excuse, of course, I could still be doing it, but I'm too lazy. I am too lazy. Instead we're doing this, so we do have uh, by far long enough wires, I'd like to trim them, but I'm not going to because uh, I just uh, uh, don't trust myself in re-terminating this properly. Uh, it's rather sensitive, this RF stuff, especially since this is going to be so out of tune anyway. Uh, ZX8401 says this is a bit like the setup you had in the van and uh, yes indeed in fact the other headless PC I showed is exactly the PC I had in the van when I was cruising around it was my time-lapse capture and media server so let's see if we can force some uh, laptop screws in here I'm thinking I probably need to size up the holes slightly to make this work. Perhaps slightly, or we could try and find a slightly smaller screw. I have so many random screws, it's probably not going to be an issue. Right, one's tiny. I think this might work. Yeah, that feels pretty good. In you go. This is definitely the right way to tap a hole in plastic. Yes, that's threaded in. That's one screen. Let's find another one of the same rough dimensions, and I've spotted one there. And we'll do that on the other one first, since I don't know if I'll actually find more of this size. This is like M2 sized screws, and this one's got a tiny head, so we need a different screwdriver. Is this, this right? That's too small. That's perfect. And we'll just mongo that in there. That went a lot easier. That's threaded in as well. Let's see if we can find more of these. That should be another one. That could actually be an even tinier one. Fits like a glove. Wow, that was easy. Um, can we find one final tiny screw? I think we can. Yes. Perfect. Now that goes in there. Right, that's Ugh. a mounting sc screws. Excellent. Christian Everson asks, "A long time since you visited one. Seem kind of obsessed with holes. I have no idea what you're referring to there." Do we actually need to make the hole by the battery slightly larger? I think these wires are going to be a bit pinched going through that actually. No, we don't want that. Because these uh, co tiny coaxes are rather sensitive. They are soft soles. And again, we don't need any of the battery mains. So could we maybe just rip some of those mechanics out? Yes, we can. So let's just rip 
this battery latch out. Out you come. Oh yeah, now we have a nice hole there. Yeah, that's perfect. Absolutely perfect. I will get a bit of use of the super long slack we have on one of these since it has to run right across the entire PC. What are those long and black and white wires? They're huge. Uh, they are the wires for these uh, laptop uh, Wi-Fi antennas. Uh, so if you're just joining, uh, we've removed uh, the entire screen, the entire screen assembly off of this laptop. And you'll notice there are huge black and white wires coming out of that as well. And these are our Wi-Fi antennas. So without a screen assembly, your laptop is not going to have any Wi-Fi connectivity. Uh, and since we want this laptop to be headless and have Wi-Fi connectivity, we're adding our own old recycled laptop antennas to it. Just uh, bolting them to the case. So that... I think that screw just disappeared forever bolt them to the case so that uh, we can actually have Wi-Fi without, uh, without having the lid installed. The reason I want to get rid of the lid is just to uncover the power button uh, so that I can have it sitting around uh, f like a thin piece of gear, like a, a slab basically, and still be able to press the power button and turn it on. So the hole on this is a bit too small. Can we just use our... Huh. We need... Man, that's going to be almost impossible to make bigger. So let's just mount these with one screw. I'm sure that's fine for the time being. Oh no, let's try to force one of these screws through once more. I'm sure I can find some new ones if they disappear. No, if that's not going to work. It's just bending the very thin metal of, a, of the antenna. So we'll main these with one screw, I'm sure it's fine. This thing is not going to be very mechanically uh, moved around anyway. And we could even be use of that as an excuse, just say we want to be able to angle the antennas. Okay, now that's actually horrifying. Yeah, it really would look a lot better having two screws holding that in place. So maybe, just maybe, we can use a hand drill with a slightly bigger bit to drill a hole. Let's see what we have in here. I just have smaller bits. I think this is a 1.5. Now we're going to have to use a power, power drill because my 1.5 is stuck in there. Burke says hot glue. Uh, that does not work because the plastic these are made of uh, basically doesn't adhere to hot glue. If you've ever tried to hot glue something mechanically sturdily to a laptop, uh, you're going to uh, have a bad time. But uh, we have got drills, so... Let's just find... I should have like 100 2.5 mil drills lying around. Because I kept breaking 2.5 mil drills for a project, so I just ordered like a hundred or a thousand off of eBay. But these have since been spread around everywhere. Uh, 
as a few. Brand new Chinese drill bits. And we need something to go underneath that while we are drilling because I'm not going to drill into the laptop. This feels a bit wrong. Probably want to do high speed for this. It's impossible to keep this thing. That is incredibly ugly, but it works. The whole thing is just bent and horrid now, but that doesn't matter. It's such a light thing, it doesn't need to be very thoroughly made, so we'll just do the same thing to the other one. And that just ripped off completely, because my drill is a piece of shit. So that antenna is going to have to be made with just one mate, oh well. Oh well, we tried. A valiant effort. This one turned out pretty good though. We have a bigger hole. Now I've lost like a whole bunch of screws now. That's one. We can actually recycle. I think the screw we used, yeah, this screw used to mount the battery bracket we removed a couple of minutes ago. We can just recycle that here because it's the right size. So not all is lost. Okay, one mount and This is hard to see. There we go. Two mounts. That's one Wi-Fi antenna mounted. Pretty well. I don't mind that. In that case, well, we definitely have enough slack to get to the Wi-Fi card, that's for sure. We'll just have to coil this around in there. Now, what to do about this poor thing which lost a mount? That's a bit annoying, actually. Uh, there are remnants of foil tape on this, so we'll just use foil tape. Foil tape should adhere well on this as long as we uh, clean it up properly. Isopropyl alcohol, wipey wipey. Foil tape. tape like it's aluminium it's uh, usually used in building uh, like for a, a rather local thing when you build a sauna you use a lot of that to tape the walls together just to provide heat and waterproofing 
So it's uh, rather easily available in Finland. I can't speak for the rest of the world. So we'll just uh, basically wrap that around and uh, put it around there. It's going to work just fine. So now we don't need this screw anymore. I'm hoping this is not going to like do some horrible RF -y thing and just make this antenna useless. I'll find out if it works. So that's going on that way around. So we'll put the tape like so. Put it on tight and let's not do tape to tape. Ah, uh, there we go. That's an antenna with a foil tape mount. So now we'll screw that in place with the remaining mount, which I didn't destroy. Making sure not to tape this thing to literally everything in the process. And I think that's going to be quite fine. So that's tightened down well. A bit too well, but that's fine. That goes round there, and this goes into that hole. Well, that's actually going to connect it to uh, this me metalized uh, grain film here. So that could be a good thing. I think these antennas are basically require a good grain to work right. So there we go. That's one antenna, two antennas. Perfect. I'll just have to rate this wire as well and hook it up and see if we have any Wi-Fi coverage. We might end up replacing the Wi-Fi card in this thing as well, uh, because the Ferros one which is installed is uh, a bit dicky. It does a thing where it'll spot my Wi-Fi networks and then I click connect and it thinks for a while and then the networks disappear and never appear again until I reboot the PC. Let's just use this little extra bit of foil tape to tape these wires together so that they'll be a bit more friendly to my rating. There we go. That's pretty decent. This is just flapping around, but it doesn't really bother me. Or does it? Should we? Yeah, let's just tape that down with another piece of foil tape. The reason I'm using foil tape for this is because it, it tends to adhere very good to uh, plastics and metals. As long as you have a reasonably flat surface, this stuff adheres very well. And once it adheres, it's going to stay there basically forever. It's much better than electrical tape, for instance, which has a tendency to kind of let go after a while. Kaplan tape is good as well. Uh, you, of course, don't want to put this on like a PCB or something, because it is rather conductive. So we'll just tape that. On that. And we have enough left over to tape this guy over here as well. I think a big part, big part of why the foil tape works so well is because it's metal and the metal kind of wants to stay the same shape after you've shaped it. Uh, unlike plastic, which just kind of keeps on flexing forever and wants to return to just being a straight piece, usually. Alright. 
Oh, we can actually put this in the original Wi-Fi wiring rating slots there. Come on. Come on, in you go. Click. Yeah, there's like some kind of wiring rating slot there as well. Let's use that as well. This is becoming a beautiful wiring job, actually. Thank you, Fujitsu, for providing rating slots right where I need them. Now oh, we're going to fit one wire there, though. Oh, well. It's 50% beautiful. These wires are a bit tricky to work with because you don't want to pinch them. If you pinch them, uh, they often short out internally and uh, die. And uh, then you need new wiring and that's a bother. There we go. Beautiful. Oh, that's not staying in place. But eh. Uh, But eh, I'll just coil these back and forth here until they're a suitable length. It doesn't require too much coiling. The black one's pretty much the right length already. Uh, it is kind of twisted though, which is not good because these connectors can't handle twisting very well. They tend to just kind of fall off if there's any kind of torque applied in the wire. So we probably want to tape this wiring down somewhere. Because one of the, one of these headless PCs I built in such a way that you can't open it to access the Wi-Fi card easily. And uh, one of the Wi-Fi wires actually fell off of that one. And uh, I basically can't fix it without putting down a huge amount of effort, so I just didn't bother. So we'll just, like, put a bit of Capiton tape there to hold those guys in place, and I think we're good. Ultra-wide Capiton tape. So let's try and ma mount this as close to the actual plugs as possible. So that's where we want our tape. Well, this is such a huge piece of tape that it's just going over everything anyway. So it doesn't. We don't need tactics here. We're just brute forcing it. And where's my plastic tool? Where's my plastic tool? This makes a huge difference on the longevity of uh, applied Capiton tape. And uh, these connectors are reasonably stable now. And I want to put a piece of tape over here as well because this just keeps wanting to flop out. Station 240 says, Antenna secured with foil. How does that work with a mind control race? It works very well. This PC is definitely being controlled by my keyboard. Should make some silly conspiracy theorist joke, but I don't have a mind about it. Right, hey, let's remember to reconnect the Ethernet. Because depending on how this goes, we will end up replacing the Wi-Fi card and then we're going to need to put in drivers through that. 
Right, so that's pretty much done. Then we just need to put the top cover back on. And close up the big screw cigarette packet because else we can have screws everywhere. Put that aside, throw the battery main thing in the trash and turn this thing on. I do note my beautiful hard drive mounting me mechanism. Another piece of Capiton tape. Uh, where's the top cover gun? Where's the top cover gun? Ugh, this thing is somewhat disgusting still. So we have power button and touchpad. Yeah, that's. Oh yeah, the horrible speaker connector which we have to poke underneath the main board and connect from the underside. Let's do power button now because it's easy to access. It's easier to access now than after you've folded the cover down. Using my forehead for the only thing it's good for. There we go. And touchpad goes. Come on. Into the plug. You. There you go. Excellent. Click. Right. Let's not squeeze the antennas until they break. Alright. This is so soft. Don't squeeze the antennas, he says, and then he squeezes the antennas. This thing has no snap locks. Or maybe it had once, but they've just ceased. Due to all the abuse this thing has been through. Let's just put in a couple of screws so that it doesn't fall apart instantly. Oh, that's no longer a screw, mate. Novoi Perkele asks, what will this be used for? It will be mounted behind a small TV and used to play YouTube streams uh, while I fall asleep. So it's basically a dedicated YouTube machine. There we go, that's like three screws. Good enough. So now we're going to need uh, a monitor and we're going to need a keyboard and a mouse. Oh, I have a monitor. I have a monitor. That's unusual. I don't usually have an extra monitor down here. So now we're going to need a HDMI to DVI adapter cable because that thing is ancient and doesn't have HDMI. I should have a suitable wire around here somewhere. But it's disappeared. But not to worry. We have adapters. I should have HDMI wires here as well. I do. So... HDMI goes in there. Oh, end goes in there. And the third end goes in there. And we need power for the monitor. Which comes at a random wire back here. Let's actually give you guys. Yeah, that's as good as it's gonna get. Is that thing alive? It is alive. 
Oh, we're going to need a charger as well for this thing, aren't we? I have a charger, but I don't have a power cord. Where the hell's my power cord? I have had power cords. Man. Where is my power cord? So many cords, no power cords. I just have to steal the one from my camera charger. Power cord into power outlet into PC. Is there going to be fire coming out? No. Oh yeah, we want to connect the keyboard as well because uh, this thing, uh, when you don't have a fan installed, it's going to get beep and refuse to boot unless you press F1. I hope this keyboard is going to work. This is not actually a, a keyboard head. It's a, a composite USB device, so some PCs don't like it. That's not turning on. Why is that not turning on? Is this charger dead? Do we not have power in that outlet? What's going on? We do have power, I know that. What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? I forgot to hook up the speakers. That's probably not it, but we'll do that anyway, never to remember it. How would I have managed to kill this? Speakers into the speaker receptacle. Oh my Christ, this is annoying. This is very annoying. How is that not pairing on? Charge it dead. Shouldn't be dead. My multimeter is dead. Do we have another multimeter? We have another multimeter. Well, this has all gone horribly wrong, hasn't it? This thing was working all day today. Charge is working. Although I can see. The charge is a bit worn out. Could be it's not actually connecting very well to the plug inside the PC. Ah, that's better. I bent the connector on the plug and it worked well. The PC should be going beep though, and it isn't, so that's not good. It should also not be giving video, which it isn't, so that's normal. Why it didn't go beep though is bothering me. Maybe we still don't have a good connection in the power cord. I can't just gonna take my tweezers and poke these guys in slightly. If you do too much here, they're just going to get comp completely scrumpled, uh, crumpled when you uh, connect it, so you need to be careful. That felt good, though. Oh, yeah. Power. Go beep. Maybe the speakers are just not connected. 
No, it doesn't seem to be posting because it should be lighting a specific LED. How could this thing possibly have been killed? It's not even responding to long power button press. Oh, this just turned interesting. Someone's asking what the annoying noise in the background is. The ticking noise is probably my soldering station. It goes ticky 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 ticky. What could we possibly have done wrong? This thing doesn't really need anything to power on. It worked fine without a monitor when I tried it like an hour ago. So the RAM is kind of not seated right, but I don't think that's bad enough to cause issues. No, the RAM is perfect. Why you no work? Let's try it again. And if this doesn't work, we'll try it with the internal monitor. And I'll, let's see if we get up to the power meter as well, so we can see if the CPU is starting. Power on. I plug it in. That helps. So it's lighting the LED. Now we turn the LED off. Power on. I just turned it off. Power on. It's drawing one watt. So it's not starting the CPU. That's curious. This is how it behaved uh, before I got it to work. The remedy that time was to take the CMOS battery out and put it back in. Let's try disconnecting the touchpad, disconnecting the keyboard. No, it's just drawing one watt and doing nothing. That's curious. That's really curious. Where's the CMOS battery? Oh, it's going to be on the other side, isn't it? Let's just see what, I, what happens if we plug the original screen in. It was a bit grouchy about that at some point, but, whoops, but I got it to reliably turn on without a screen many times. So I don't think that's going to be an issue. Now we have a monitor. If this fixes, I'm going to be somewhat annoyed. No, it's still drawing one watt and doing nothing. It's going very slightly beep. Uh, let's just undo the CMOS battery and put that back in and see if that's going to fix it. Annoyingly, we need to take the top, cov top cover off to access that. 
I'm genuinely surprised this was not an expected turn of events. Someone's asking CPU fan. Uh, it's worked fine without the CPU fan and I don't intend to use it with a CPU fan. It doesn't need it since it's a real, real, really low power CPU. I've tested it and it's run fine without a CPU fan, without anything. My bloody speakers. Ah. Whoever put the speaker connector on the underside of a board should be shot. Well, the CMOS battery is not on this side either. Where the hell is the CMOS battery? How could I not see that? Oh, the CMOS battery is underneath there. So you have to take the whole motherboard out in order to access the CMOS battery. That's a bad design. Right until disconnecting everything. Kind of. We don't really care, so we can just, I think, rip it out. No, we can't. Oh yeah, we can if we just break the plastic over the VGA port. That should be rip ripable. Yeah, there we go. So our CMOS battery is in here. Man, that's dumb. So we can how's this supposed to come out? Might be an issue if the CMOS battery is not mounted very well. Could we be we need to bend the spring slightly? If a bloody thing would come out. There we go. Yeah, let's just bend the battery contact in the bottom of the socket. There we go. Now it's got a boner. So, poke that back in. Hopefully this thing is going to run now. I mean, this fixed it last time. So reconnect the power. and attach the one screw holding it together again once we get it to seat properly there we go ugh, flux Yuck. I'm covered with flocks now, damn it. That's annoying. Man, that's annoying. All right, USB side connector goes back in. Okay, now oh, yeah, we need a power button as well, which is on the top cover. Come on, little ziff. And the ziff has been ziffed. Okay, let's see what this thing does now. Oh, yeah. HDMI. I don't think you can get the CMOS setup on the HDMI, so you need to do that on the internal monitor. But maybe it'll go beep at me. 
I just wanted to go beep. It's drawing power now. It's drawing 10 watts, so we fixed it. It's not going to go beep because the speakers aren't connected. And I pressed F1 and uh, it's booting. You can see the hard drive LED flashing there if you look really closely. So now we've got the picture of a monitor. And this is running fine. Let's give you guys some brightness on this very worn aid monitor. Ta da! It installed drivers for something. What have you installed drivers for? It won't tell me. Do we have a network? We have a bunch of empty squares. Well, that's interesting. Network and sharing center. Do we have any? Uh, we do have Wi Fi. 300 megabits connected to my 5 gigahertz network. So is that going to work? Backslash, backslash. 10.1.1.1. Now that works. Okay. So we have Wi-Fi, we have good good speed on it, a good quality signal. Something's freaked out there because we don't have a network and sharing center, but I have had Windows for you. So I think we're good now. Novoi <laughs> Pergala says, I told you shouldn't put in the screws. It's bad juju to put the screws in. Indeed. And well, let's uh, shut this down, uh, make sure it uh, works again. So that's off. So the procedure to turn this on is you press the power button, you wait a while, then you press F1 and now it should boot. Yes. It's booting and after a while you get to uh, image on the screen. Ta-da! It's a bit dumb, but you can't get to any picture without having the internal monitor connected uh, uh, for the BIOS and stuff. And now the Wi-Fi is working there. Let's see both my networks. There's actually a third network a bit further away, which we aren't seeing, so we don't have quite as good signal as we possibly could. But then again, this thing is lying on top of the old screen assembler there, which is basically a bunch of metal, so it's not going to have optimal signal uh, characteristics anyway. It's in a bit of a bad spot right now, so I'm quite happy with this, actually. So let's uh, turn this off, reassemble it again, and hope that it... Oh yeah, we need to configure the BIOS. Uh, so we're going to do that on the internal monitor. And I, I just realized that I've turned this thing on with like the, hin the metal hinges here are sticking up into random spots of the machine. So we could have easily destroyed that if I wasn't so lucky that it was just resting on the SSD. Right here. Screws. Let's hope the screws don't kill it this time around. I'll just put a couple of random ones in. It really doesn't matter. Screw last do another one. It didn't want to go in. There we go, that's better. 
So two there and like a couple over here. There's nothing there. I think this corner is fine. Like half of the metal inserts are just missing. Oh, there's already a screw there. So I'll put it there. Is this screw going to do anything if I screw on it? I'll just keep doing this for a while. Snap. Hey, it worked. Good. And we'll put like one in this hole because it's the closest we're going to get to the corner. Because the corner by the DC plug is completely mashed and the metal insert is broken. Man, this thing is... This is a cheap laptop. It's not going together very well. It's all bendy and horrible. But then again, it's missing like a lot of pieces, so I guess you can't blame it. There we go. Beautiful. Now oh, there's like one screw you can put on the top here to mount the main board. So if the main board is mounted with two screws rather than just one. There we go. That's fine. So that should be a reasonably headless PC. Let's reconnect the trackpad. Hoping that doesn't kill it. Uh, right. Is it still going to work? Press the power button. It draws power. Hit the camera with your head. Press F1. We have hard drive activity. And like magic, I think that yellow LED is going to turn green. Yes, it has. Excellent. Touchpad working, touchpad working. Good. Shut down. This thing is reasonably quick with an SSD, even though it's got a rather lazy CPU. And there we go, back to being powered down. So now we actually need to hook the internal monitor up again. Uh, make sure the BIOS looks sane. There are a couple of settings that are really important. Like the uh, setting for always providing power to the USB devices. If I don't have power to the USB devices 24-7, I can't bash the keyboard to turn it on. And that is uh, really important for this PC, since it's a bother accessing the power button. Screen capture. That's how you do screen capture. CPU fan error has occurred. Hammer F1, F2. And it's not doing anything. I, I don't want to start Windows. I want to enter the CMOS. Oh, come on, get a move on. What are you doing? Oh, it thinks the monitors are extended. I no? Okay. Well, that was interesting. This thing is so confused. I know you need to shut it down actually because it does a fast boot thing if you just uh, turn it on, uh, turn, uh, restart it. You don't get a chance to enter the BIOS. So I'm hammering F1, F2. I think those are the right screens. Uh, keys. Hey, God damn it! Let me enter the BIOS. The 
exit F12. Ah, this is annoying. Well, fine. Let's let's just put this thing in sleep and see if we can wake it up with a keyboard. If if we can do that, then I'm happy. Then we don't need to do anything else. But I'm going to need a more sane keyboard for that. SteelSeries keyboard is working. So we'll put this in. Sleep. And now it's in sleep mode. And I'll hammer a key. And it's powering on. Good. That's what we want. That's what we care about. Let's give it another go at uh, entering the CMOS. I think it's F2 it's supposed to be on this. Let's maybe try just hammering F2 and nothing else. Control Alt Delete. No. Oh, there you go. F12 maybe. This has not gone well. But whatever. I'll just make the judgment call that it's fine. Even though it's behaving weirdly at boot up right now, but I think that's because it's kind of confused by the internal monitor. It's nice to shut it down. Uh, disconnect the internal monitor. Make sure it boots up fine, showing image on the big screen. And if it does that, uh, we're done. And this is fine. And it's not going to cause any issues ever. So now let's power it off. We'll uh, focus, please. Uh, internal monitor. Be gone. Wow, well, that's excellent focus. Good boy. Focus, please. There we go. So now we have no internal monitor anymore. Away you go. So we will connect the HDMI and we will connect the power. We already have our keyboard. Oh yeah, we want to connect our speakers. Hey cock, I've lost the lead for the speakers. I really want the speakers because it goes beep when you boot and that means after it's gone beep you can press F1 to boot it. So I want it to be able to beep. Aha. Uh -huh. I've got the plug. I've got the plug so let's just kind of poke that down there somewhere to the underside of a motherboard. Where the speakers on the top cover connect, which is uh, such a horrible bother. In you go. Turn into the belly of a beast. Okay, I think we might be able to reach that now. Yes. Are you going to be a dick? Please. I'm begging you. V. 
this is not going well. What is that wire stuck on? How can this possibly be stuck? There we go. Finally, speakers. That probably tangled in the power button wire and completely destroyed that, but eh. let's just say it didn't. So now I have speakers. It definitely got tangled in the power cord button because that's not connected properly anymore. So let's just connect that properly and right. Power, power button, beep, F1. I think I was too early. F1, it's booting. Give me green LED, give me green LED. Green LED. Hey! Speakers work. That was ear shattering. Ah. So can we see my final? No, we can't see my final Wi-Fi network. So these antennas we've installed aren't perfect, <coughs> but they work. This is gonna be just good enough. Definitely good enough. We're getting 300 megabits on the 5 gigahertz network. That's right across to the other end of the house. <sighs> okay, that's fine. I just want to finally verify that it will wake up from sleep by mashing the keyboard. So it has now been put into sleep. The LED is blinking. So when we press a random button on our liquid damaged steel series keyboard, that monitor LED should turn green. Yes. Okay. And it shouldn't lock a PC like that, but that's just a dumb Windows setting. Where's that under users, maybe? Err, I don't remember where you set that, I'll figure that out later. Right, I'm gonna say we're done. We have turned this into a headless PC which is kind of able to function. You can't access the BIOS without having the internal screen connected, but uh, you can basically do everything else. As long as uh, it gets into Windows, you're fine. And this thing has 24 seven USB power. It's capable of being awoken by the keyboard from sleep. So it works well. I have a little fancy keyboard which has a USB hub inside, so I just have my phone charger connected to uh, the USB hub on the keyboard. So I'm actually charging my phone from this every night at a very low current, which is very good for the battery. So let's have a quick look at the chat and uh, be done. So the technical part of the stream is done. I'm just going to Take a quick scroll over this and uh, we'll be done. Someone says we're due for Jitsu. I have had to die within three years. You've had bad luck. I, I think for Jitsu are quite good actually. They tend to be rather reliable as far as consumer laptops are concerned. Ah, yeah. 
Not a lot of stuff going on over chat. Yeah, I'm gonna say we're done. So thank you for watching. Make sure you enjoy yourself. Bye.